So we have our application up and running. Let's see how to move forward with our next steps. And that next step in our case here is setting up queues. So our Laravel queue worker works, right? So we can process background jobs. Now, the default way to do that on fly is to set up a thing called process groups. Now, by default, I'll do fly status here. Your applications all are in this process group that's just named app, right? You can see it right here. Um, the process here is named app. It's the first column here. And then we have the ID of our machine running. We have a single machine and the other information it stopped right now. But if I go ahead and go to my application, that'll uh, restart it. So I do fly status again, we'll see started instead of stopped. Great. So our process group here is named app. That is the important part. In order to run queues and then later cron, we can just go ahead and make a new process group. That, like most things, are a configuration in our fly toml file. Okay, so if we scroll down here, we'll see we have build, env, HTTP service, all that good stuff. HTTP service, notice, it actually has a process group called app, or I should say the HTTP service is applied only to the process group called app. You can, this is an array, right? So we could add other things, uh, but we only want it for app. App is a thing as, um, listening for HTTP requests, right? And we have some health checks and all that good stuff. And our HTTP service is um, telling Fly how to route web requests to this. And it should only apply to this process group called app because the one called app is the one that listens for web requests, right? It's the uh, service that is running in a VM that is listening for requests. Okay, I'm going to stop repeating myself for that. What we're going to do here is add a new section. We're going to call it processes. And in here, we can define our processes. So um, when we're defining this uh, block specifically, we need to put our app process in here and just have a blank uh, string for its value. You'll see why in a second. The second part here, uh, the thing we're going to add to get our queue workers is uh, a second process group. Now, we can name the process group whatever we want, probably without an apostrophe there or a semicolon. Uh, in this case, what we're going to do is just name it something like worker. I'll name mine worker, and then we have to define uh, a value for worker. Now, what are these values? The values here are a command to run in a virtual machine. In our case, that's PHP, artisan, Q listen, or you know some similar thing uh, as applies for you as you want for your application, right? You might want some flags to say which queue uh, or you know which connection type to make, whatever, uh, whatever options make sense for your case. But what we're going to do here is just define a command to run in this process. So uh, what are these commands we're actually running? Okay, so this kind of relates to how Docker works. Docker has this uh, thing called entry point script and then uh, the command that you run when you spin up a Docker image into a container. So the entry point is a script that's always run uh, as the entry point of your Docker image. And that's the thing that's going to run when you spin up a virtual machine on fly. And the command you pass it is like an optional uh, set of arguments you can send to that entry point script. Um, in our case, for Laravel applications, the entry point is just a little shell script. And if you pass it nothing, no arguments at all, it's just going to boot up uh, the web server, right? Nginx, PHP, FBM, or whatever else is configured. If you pass it an argument, a command, it's going to run that command instead. So for our app process, we pass it nothing. And the reason why we pass it nothing is because we want that entry point script to start up the web server and all that good stuff. So the app process is going to listen for web requests, right? It's a web server, and it sends our requests off to PHP. For our worker process, we override that. We tell it not to spin up the web server. Instead, we're going to tell it to run the command we provide. The command we provide here is PHP artisan queue listen and whatever flags we want, right? So that's going to spin up a worker. The layer of a worker is the PHP artisan queue whatever command. So that is going to run a worker. Now, important point about processes, the process groups here. Two things to care about. One, they spin up and run their own virtual machine. So when we add an app process and, and add our additional worker process here, that's creating a second virtual machine. It's not just one virtual machine anymore. It's not all running inside of one virtual machine. There's multiple. Each process is a separate virtual machine, and they can be scaled separately. That's point two. So they can be scaled separately, which means I can run like you know 50 instances of my app process, two instances of my worker, or vice versa, or whatever. Different regions for all of them, all that good stuff. They can be scaled separately. So let's go ahead and not scale them. Just going to be one virtual machine each. I set some processes here as app and worker. I've made sure that my HTTP service checks, the services here, are defined only for the app process because they only relate to a web server, right? They're not um, specific to the worker process. The worker process doesn't have an endpoint we can use for health checks or anything. So we only apply it to the app process. So we can save and quit this. We can do fly deploy. And our next deploy, we should get two machines, right? One is the app process again. 
And uh, the second will be a new virtual machine that runs our qListen command. Now, I haven't configured uh, a queue worker here and set it to Redis or anything like that, even though we have Redis running. So it might actually fail out with an error. I'm not sure yet, but we'll see that it's at least going to run the PHP artist and queue listen command. And if I had everything lined up with the with a queue connection listening for Redis and all that good stuff, it would have just worked. OK, so we can see this spinning up. There's no machines in group worker, so it's launching one for the worker. And then it's also deploying into our app um, process. So it should be deploying both things, right? Once this is finished, we'll see if that's all true. OK, this is finished. Let's go ahead and just make sure this thing works. It should just go ahead and serve that right request. It does. Good. And we'll do fly m status, or not fly m, sorry, fly status again. We'll see we have two machines this time, right? A worker machine and an app machine. And in fact, we're going to see something fun here. The worker machine has two machines, not just one. This is for uh, high availability. If one machine breaks or something, the second machine will start up. Now, are you paying for this? Not really. Uh, see this little uh, T here, right? This T and this little message underneath it says standby machine. It will take over only in the case of the host hardware failure. If you have two workers here, only one is running. The second one will always be stopped, so you're not paying for that compute time. But it will start if the host fails that the primary one is on, right? So you have some automatic failover there. Good. Now, the last thing I want to show you is that you can scale these independently of each other. So if I do fly scale, this is the uh, command you use to scale out how many virtual machines in an app are running. So uh, you could just do like count two, right, traditionally. But um, in this case, we can't just do that. Uh, it's not that simple because we want to scale out our app and our worker separately. So I can do app equals one, keep that at one. Worker equals two or three or four or whatever I want. I'll do worker equals four because more is more fun. And you can scale your applications out like that. Oops, I'm sorry. Fly scale count is still the command. But instead of just passing a command um, or a number, rather, we pass it, uh, the number for app and the number for worker. App and worker here correlate to the process groups that we created, right? Those names have to match up. App, so fun, is going to be scale according to this plan. Two machines for group worker plus two machines, right? Add two to the two that exist. And um, at the current size, right? So uh, share CPU 1x, I have at the smallest default size of the server. All right, so it's going to great create two more for a total of four worker servers. Uh, notes that one of those worker servers is still a standby server. We could actually start it manually, do like fly m start, that kind of thing, to actually get four up. Otherwise, we'll have three, I think. And um, one will be a like standby server. All right, so just like I said, we have one app uh, server, three worker servers, and one standby. That's a total of four. Is it a little bit funky that you just ask for four and one's stopped and is on standby? Yes, it's a little bit funky, but it's uh, what we have currently set up for uh, higher availability to have one in standby. You could scale up to five if you truly wanted four, or you could do fly m start, and then um, the ID of this to start that one up, and then you have four up and running. OK, so this is how we get uh, queues working for our app, right? We head to our fly toml file. We define a new process group. That process group is going to run some command. That command is the thing that's going to be running in the new virtual machine, because each process is a different virtual machine. This spins up a new virtual machine when we deploy. And then we can scale our app versus our worker versus whatever other processes separately. So good to go. We have our queues working. They're on our own server, so they're not uh, splitting resources between our web server and the workers themselves, which is great. And we're good to go.